And the gracious people of God said, Father, we thank you for your love. And we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your compassion. That your grace reaches everyone. We pray, Lord, that everyone will come inside this circle of your grace and they'll find that grace sufficient every moment of our lives in Jesus' name. Let your favor flow into every life. Compassion in every life. Joy in every life. Victory in every life. And Lord, we pray when any challenge comes, this grace will be sufficient for everyone. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Romans chapter 6. And now that Paul the Apostle has been making progress in talking about what we have got in Christ and is getting out of the needs of the past, the sorrows of the past, the challenges of the past, the argument between Jews and Gentiles in the past, it now brings us into the plain ground of the grace of God. He now wants to ask us a question or a series of questions. What is going to be the consequence of this grace? Look at this, chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? Give me the answer. God forbid. After receiving the boundless grace of God, at such a great price of His only begotten Son, we cannot continue in sin. The apostle uses various strong terms to emphasize our freedom from outward sin and inward sin. Number one, he says, we are dead to sin, so we cannot longer live in them, in verse 2. Then number two, he said, we are buried with Christ by baptism, immersion in water. Our past life is drowned under that water, verse 4. Number three, he says, we are raised up like Christ into newness of life, verses 4 and 5. Number four, it says, our old man's self, the body of sin, is crucified, made powerless and inactive. The sixth, first part. Number five, it says that the body of sin will be destroyed. Henceforth, will not serve sin. Second part of verse six. Number six, it says, we're dead to sin. We're alive to God, verse 11. Number 7, it says, we're made free from sin. We have become righteous and holy. This is your experience. This is your privilege. You will enjoy, demonstrate this privilege in Jesus' name. Identification with Christ, our sanctifier. Identification with Christ, our sanctifier. Three points. Number one, our conversion, salvation, and resurrection with Christ. Our conversion, salvation, and resurrection with Christ. Number two, our crucifixion, sanctification, and resemblance to Christ. Our crucifixion, sanctification, and resemblance to Christ. Number three, our conquest. Somebody there has conquered already. Our conquest, spirituality, and reflection of Christ. Our conquest, spirituality, and reflection of Christ. Let's come to number one. Our conversion, salvation, and resurrection with Christ. It tells us in Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Look at that answer. 
It was a very strong answer. He said, there are people that are saying, all right, if the grace of God much more abounds, and the grace of God has come to us, he found us in the dungeon. And the grace of God stretches out a long hand and lifted us up. Can we then continue in sin so that every time the grace of God will come? Every time the grace of God will come. It says, that's like asking. I had sickness. It was very painful. It was deadly. It was unbearable. The pain was much. But thank God, I have the healing balm. And because the healer is always there, can I then continue to get myself into situations that will make me sick? Into situations that will make me have unbearable pain? You, say, you don't want to do that. Although the healer is there, you don't want to have so many scars in your life and so many scars in your tissue and so many scars in your inner man it says although the grace of god is there we cannot continue in sin it says god forbid then it says in verse 2 how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. He said, don't you know the implication of being saved? You are dead to sin. If you are dead to sin, how can you live in that sin you are dead to any longer? What does that mean? A man was a smoker. And if he saw cigarettes, no way he must go after it. But now he's dead. And the cigarette will not invite him, attract him anymore. A man was a drunkard. At any time he saw the bottle of alcohol, he will drink it. He cannot risk, but the man is now dead. And because he's now dead, that thing has no attraction for him anymore. He says, in the same way you are dead to sin, you cannot live in it any longer. He says, no, ye not. So that so many of us, as were baptized into his death, were baptized, uh, were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism, immersion. We are buried with him by baptism. We are inside that water, under that water, into death. Like, that, like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. It says that's the implication of the grace of God coming in, into our lives. Look at verse 5. For if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. He's talking about our common salvation. And there were some people that were coming to uh, the believers. They were saying, uh, you know, the grace of God is always there. And since the grace of God saved us, if we go back to sin again, the grace will come. If we plunge ourselves into sin again, the grace will still avail for us. Jude chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Jude chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Common salvation, universal salvation, available salvation, soul cleansing salvation, a transforming salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before ordained of old to this condemnation on godly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. There were people that came around and said, all right, if the grace of God reaches me, and the grace is always available, the more I sin, the more I then can have that grace. He said those people, they crept in, they misunderstood the message of grace. And it turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. The final result is denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
in second corinthians chapter 6 second corinthians chapter 6 reading from verse 1 second corinthians chapter 6 reading from verse 1 he tells us in verse 1 with them as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. There were people that received that grace of God in vain and they were, they were acting like, since the grace of God abounds, shall we continue in sin? And Paul the Apostle said, God forbid, if you do that, you receive the grace of God in vain. Verse 2, for he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time, and now is the day of salvation. It says, give me no offense. You've got the grace of God. Give me no offense. You are rejoicing in the free gift of the grace of God. Give me no offense. You have the abundance of the grace of God. Give me no offense in any sin that the ministry be not blamed. It tells us in verses 17 and 18, it says, wherefore, come out from among them, the people that have received the grace of God in vain, the people who are turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, it says, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You know what he's saying here? He's saying that grace is not an isolated virtue. That grace has repentance. You repent. Come out from among them. And grace has relationship. I will be your father. And grace has righteousness. And then you live as a child of God, as a son, as a daughter of God. It tells us in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 20. The grace of God comes into our lives and then it makes a change. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ is living in you. I say Christ is living in you. And it's assuring you, everywhere you go, he lives in power. He lives in strength. He lives, he gives you the grace and the gift within you. He says, I'm always there. They asked a little child who was uh, just converted. And they said, now, they called the name. And they said, what are you going to do now? If Satan knocks at the door, he said, I'll tell Jesus to open the door and confront him and answer on my behalf. Jesus is inside you. If Satan knocks at the door, Jesus inside you, the great one, the greater one, the mighty one, the mightier one, he will deal with Satan on your behalf. Sickness knocks at the door, Jesus, the great physician, lives inside you. He will deal with that sickness in Jesus' name. Any problem, any challenge knocks at the door. The one that is inside you will answer that challenge in Jesus' name. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for who? Gave himself for who? Thank God is for you. Time of need is for you. Time of temptation is for you time of when something comes that is greater than your natural strength it will be for you in Jesus name Galatians chapter 6 verse 14 Galatians chapter 6 verse 14 but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Look up here for a moment. What does that mean? It's like somebody was very strong, captivating, and you couldn't resist, neither could you overcome his power. 
And then the government of Rome, that's the picture here, took him up and nailed him to the cross. Like those two thieves that were nailed to the cross on one side of Jesus, on the other side of Jesus. Now, that world that was so strong, having a driving and a pull on you, is nailed to the cross on your behalf. That world that is nailed to the cross cannot overpower you anymore. Now you walk free. I said now you walk free. And the power of God will keep you free in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. It tells us in verse 1, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Are you secured? Are you protected? When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You'll be victorious in Jesus' name. Point number two, our crucifixion, sanctification, and resemblance to Christ. We're looking at Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, we're looking at it from verse 6. In verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. He says, we need to know this. There are people that have the experience, but they don't know they have the experience. They have something. They don't know that they have that thing. But Paul, the apostle, said, you've got the grace of God, you're a child of God, and you have this abundance of the grace of God. This is what you must know, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That is, Paul, we should not serve sin. He's talking about two things there. Number one, the old man is crucified. Number one, the old man, the tyranny of self, the power and dominion of self, all that is now crucified. It's made impotent. It's made powerless. And it says because of that, now you overcome. And now he says, but there's another thing that still should be done. That the body of sin, the one that produces sin, the root of sin, the nature of sin, the embodiment of sin might be destroyed. It will be destroyed in Jesus' name. That henceforth, you will not be a slave of sin. You will not serve sin. It says in verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. I am free. You are free in Jesus' name. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. I remember you are dead with him and death has no dominion over you again in Jesus' name. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. And in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin. What he's saying is, what Christ did, he did for you. What Christ accomplished, he accomplished for you. So, reckon it to your account. Because God reckons it to account. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. It's talking about those who have been in slavery before. Look at those Israelites. They were in Egypt. And the Egyptian ruled over them. Great taskmasters. Mighty, powerful, irresistible touch masters. But now, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And they were delivered out of the hands of the Egyptians. After that, those Egyptians never controlled 
never dominated their lives anymore. And thank God, those Egyptians who have seen until this time, you'll see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Let no Egyptian come to reign over you. Let no sin of the past come to reign over you. Let no gambling of the past come to reign over you. Let no bad character of the past come to reign over you. You will reign over them in Jesus' name. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the loss thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. You are, you are a free moral agent. You can yield if you want to, but thank God you will not yield. I say, thank God you will not yield. It says, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are dead, that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Say to yourself, for sin shall not have dominion over me. Say it again. Say that again. The Lord has promoted you. You will not go back to the old class anymore in Jesus' name. For you are not under the law, but under grace. You are no more under the tyranny of the law. You are no more under the control of the law. You are now under grace, allied to the influence of the power of grace in your life. You see what the Lord has told us, and you see what the Lord has done for us? He has set us free. He has set me free. My brother, he has set you free. Sister, he has set you free. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verse 36. In John chapter 8 verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free. Tell me. You shall be free indeed. From all the chains of sin. All the cords of sin. Besetting sin. Powerful sin. The Lord has set you free. Psalm 1. 130. Psalm 130. We're reading from verse 8. 130 verse 8. He shall redeem Israel from He shall redeem Israel from He shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. You are redeemed from all in Jesus' name. They will, ha they will not have dominion over your life anymore. You are free. Where is the free brother? The free sister there. You are free in Jesus' name. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Who gave himself for us. You see the price he paid. See what he did. Because he wanted your freedom. Because he was going to sacrifice for your freedom. He gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from. That he might redeem us from. Any remnant of iniquity. The, the, uh, the broom of the Lord will sweep away, away today in Jesus name. Any kind of little little things there. And, uh, you know, seeing a little sin, said, I'm looking for accommodation. Can you give me accommodation? I get, get out. Are you going to give sin accommodation? No. Going to be your friend? No. It's going to be your neighbor? No. And it's going to be your acquaintance? No. Never. Because all of them were redeemed from them. I said were redeemed from them. You know, a little termite can destroy that building. A little bee can sting you and that can, nothing can be deadly. And a little mosquito can bite you. That thing can be deadly. And a little fly can get inside your soup. And then say, it doesn't matter. A little fly, uh-uh, 
I will not allow that little fly. I will not allow that little insect. All of them, the blood of Jesus will wash everything away in Jesus' name. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself. What kind of people? You are a peculiar brother, a peculiar sister. That he might purify himself, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Point number three, a conquest, spirituality, a reflection of Christ. Now that he has saved us, now that he has sanctified us, and now that the old man is crucified, we are to reflect the life of Christ. We are to conquer every turn of the way and whatever challenge may come, we conquer. And you will conquer. And that will spell out your own spirituality. Look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 from verse 15. What then? Shall we sin it because we are not under the law but under grace? Again, this strong statement, shout it out. Shout it out. Say that again. God forbid. Sin will not come into your life. Sin will not train in your life. Evil will not train in your life. Satan will not train in your life. God has put a great price on you. And God has lifted you up. And because he has lifted you up, you will not come back into the valley of despondency again in Jesus' name. Do ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, a servant ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked. That ye were, past tense, ye were, it's no more like that. Ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. From the heart, from the heart, you have obeyed. You will keep on obeying. As your days are, so will your strength be. As your days are, so will your victory be. As your days are, so will your dominion be in Jesus' name. You had a little strength before. You had great strength today. A little assurance before. A great assurance today. You didn't know of the position where God has put you in the past. Now you have adequate knowledge in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18. Being then made free from sin. He became uh, the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members as servants to righteousness unto holiness. Brother, you are holy. My sister, you will be holy. Holiness in the day. Holiness in the night. Holiness when you are alone. Holiness when you are with everybody else. And then that virtue of holiness will pass from you. Everybody that comes around you, they will be more holy in Jesus' name. Your influence will be a holy influence. And your relationship with people will bring a bridge of holiness to their lives in Jesus' name. Look at verse 22. But now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. That verse 22 is yours. It's written concerning you. It is fulfilled in your life. It will always be fulfilled in your life. You're clean. You're pure. And you're righteous. And you're holy. And that everlasting life, you'll not miss in Jesus' name. For the wages of sin is dead. For the gift of God. The gift of God. Have you got it? 
the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's telling us we are not going to serve sin anymore. We will serve the Lord. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 12. Philippians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 12. Wherefore, my, my beloved, as she have always obeyed, underline that word always, because that's the watchword in your life from now on. Always obeyed. Always obeyed. Always obeyed. Not as in my presence only, but now, much more, in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which walketh in you. God is walking in you. I say God is walking in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it for the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. You'll be a glorious Christian, a glorious believer. A glorious minister. A glorious champion. I thought my people would say amen. Yeah. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot. There will be no spot in your life. Yeah. Or wrinkle. Wrinkle is the, is the sign of the old man. The wrinkle is gone away from your life in Jesus name. Or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The Lord will accomplish it in your life. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 11. Being filled, you are no more filled with anger. I said you are no more filled with anger. You are no more filled with evil. You are no more filled with unrighteousness. Now you are filled with the fruits of righteousness. Which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of our God. And from now on, verse 21. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let's read that together. Once you go. Philippians chapter 1 verse 21. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. One, two, three, go. Say that again. Finally say that now. Christ will live in all his grace in your life in Jesus' name. And when the time comes to leave this world, everlasting reward, eternal gain, eternal profit, the joy of the Lord will be your strength all along until that final day in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and make a commitment to the Lord. Consecrated, crucified, you conquer. Saved, sanctified, be steadfast. Resemble him, reflect him, reproduce the life of Christ. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Open your mouth and tell the Lord.